What was your take on Ann Taylor filing a motion uh, with the prosecution uh, earlier this month requesting that discovery requests be placed under seal? Very interesting language. The documents contain facts or statements that might threaten or endanger the life or safety of individuals. How do you take that? Well, we've seen that throughout this case. It's yeah. such standard verbiage they're used on everything. Um, so I, I believe they're really just uh, sticking with that totality sort of of these circumstances and, and ponying off that, if you will. Uh, but it is interesting, certainly, uh, her motion, because I would think it has to do with something very significant. Mm -hmm. uh, but she doesn't really want it out in the public eye. I also wanted to comment, Tony, that, you know, some people might say, well, listen, you know, look at all of the people on social media, on TikTok, uh, what we do here on YouTube, talking about this case and and offering opinions and, and information about it, right? Mm -hmm. A big difference between doing that to a national audience and and speaking about it to the jury pool yeah. and calling them up telephonically, talking to jurors. Sure. <laughs> uh, uh, so anyway, I did want to tangent off on that. Yeah, sure. But uh, Tony, back to your your question, I I do see though that this is typical, right? Most of the requests, most of this information has been coddled up in that language. Yeah, I mean, is it just boilerplate language? And we look at it and go, well, that sounds kind of weird. But in, in reality, it's not. It's saying it would constitute an unwanted invasion of personal privacy. That makes sense. But uh, to disclose the identity of a confidential source, it, it is unclear who or what the evidence may endanger or who the possible, possible potential source could be. But if you were to speculate, I mean, what kind of source are we talking here? Are we talking some sort of exonerating source that if was found to be out there, would be in danger for exonerating Brian Koberger? Uh, or are we talking about something completely different here? I think that that could be sort of the premise here. That's how I read it. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, because of the volatility of this case, and, and we're seeing, even though we're nowhere near trial, even in and around a hearing, people are getting very upset, right? Because there is a definite group of of people that are, Pro Brian Koberger mm -hmm. uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, and so uh, there are also uh, you know a large group, well, huge group, uh, the vast majority uh, that uh, don't necessarily believe in his innocence, and that this case really does anger them. Uh, I think because when you look in the faces of the four victims, when you see the victim families, that this just keeps dragging out. And every yeah. hearing, every week that he has one as a scab, hold off and a further, you know, now we're clear out to June 27th for our next hearing. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just about venue. We don't even have a trial date. <sighs> yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is people are incited in this case. And that's what she seems to be trying to say is I got to keep this person safe, perhaps. If there is that person out there, again, like, then wh why would we not want this information to come forward? I mean, if it's not Koberger, if there's something that is clearly there that everyone is missing that can exonerate him now, why not at least throw it out to the judge or something so they can go, okay, uh, let's figure this part out before we keep going forward because maybe there is a way to exonerate if that even exists. Or is this just a lot of grandiose language to try and, again, kind of infect this other thought into the the minds of people? If we got this other big thing right here we can't tell you yet but it's gonna it's gonna be a big game changer I, I would think if you have it now bring it forward and then everybody wants justice for these kids if it's not Coburg, then we better find out who it is yeah that's exactly right and, and i do see this though tony is a bit analogous yeah to the alibi remember the big alibi yeah, oh we the, got an alibi the big, i'm driving around alibi <laughs> yeah but but remember the lead up to it we oh, have an alibi. Yeah. Everybody said, oh, my God, they're filing an alibi. That's and then true. it was a big nothing burger. Sorry, no pun intended. It's true. Um, so, but that's, so is this kind of the same thing? Yeah. You know, dangle all this out here, get everybody talking about it. And then what are we really going to see?
she certainly is good at theatrics and she's good at getting people riled up and get good at getting attention in the direction that she wants people to to focus on that is for sure she's doing a very good job of that with the public at this time it's just are these missteps that we're looking at right now or is this all part of a bigger play for her well that's that's what's going to be interesting for me even though people you know, are very, I think, concerned, not all people, but some people ha were concerned after that hearing in terms of who was really in charge of that courtroom, Yeah. right? Just with how the language played out, how, you know, she got her way. She wanted to show the PowerPoint mm -hmm. and, and the, the prosecution said, you're not showing that PowerPoint. And judge judge said, just let her do it. I'm more really interested in his rulings. And so far his rulings to me have been spot on. He just doesn't want to get overturned. He's protecting the record. I, I think he's doing the right thing of mm -hmm. giving her all this leeway. Uh, I don't think these surveys are going to fly in the form they're in, though. I don't think there's any chance. No, but I mean, could this also be a very long play, too, uh, for an appeal at some point in time where, like, look, we already had this information that the jury pool was tainted uh, and the judge still wanted it to be here. Here's what we got. We think that we should definitely be in a different county because, look, look what we have here as another piece of evidence to point to of being, being tainted or getting maybe just death off the table. Maybe those are some of the plays that are, are at hand here with Ann Taylor. I think it is at hand, and I think that this could result in that, but we haven't heard Judge Judge's ruling. No. Is he going to keep it in Latah County? Is he going to have a varied opinion? In other words, we're picking the jury from someplace else, but we're going to go ahead and have the trial here. Mm -hmm. I think it would be wrong not to have the trial uh, there because yeah. that this is the community that's been so affected, and for them not to be able to see it, uh, for them not to be able to go, uh, you know, there's no reason for that. I can't imagine he'll remove it from this courtroom, but the jury pool, that's a question to me. Maybe that'll be the compromise. Maybe that will be, uh, she can't really argue that then. Uh, otherwise, I mean, at least she's like, we need people from another country to come in. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what she's going <laughs> to try and, 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 and say here anymore. But uh, it will be interesting to continue to watch. She definitely, uh, all the action, uh, you know, quite often, you know, as we say, it happens before the actual trial, and we're watching it very much uh, in play right now. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts, and especially Apple Podcasts, where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi, and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.